Hey everyone, Mac here with Battle Drill 6, and today we're going to talk a little bit about terminal ballistics, and we're going to talk specifically about the FBI's most recent study on uh, on 9mm and why 9mm is a superior round for stopping an armed assailant, or, or I, I should say a dangerous assailant. Um, and in, in doing so, so we're going to leave out uh, jacketed hollow points and full metal jackets for this discussion. We're talking specifically about using quality self-defense ammo, and they do touch a little bit on the jacketed hollow point thing. But uh, if you guys, you know, military guys that are limited to using full metal jackets, um, that's a uh, that's kind of a different argument when we're talking about that. So when we're talking about using quality self-defense ammo, uh, that's what we're going to be going over today. The other thing is that we're talking about self-defense against an assailant, not an animal, or using it as a brush gun or anything of that sort. Uh, so it's just important to uh, to kind of clarify those two notes. So go ahead and uh, stick with us, and we'll, uh, we'll we'll start diving into the executive summary portion of that FBI study. Okay, so let's take a look at the executive summary from the FBI's uh, most recent study on, on the ballistics of the 9mm round. Okay, so first thing that we can look at and see is that the 9mm, 3-7 sig, 40 and 45, it goes up as we look at the uh, the, the expansion and, and uh, I'm sorry, the wound cavity of these rounds uh, with jacketed hollow points. If you look over at the side, all of these are jacketed hollow points. And so that's the important fact to note here is that with jacketed hollow points, there's no argument with it that the 45 creates a larger wound track, 40 following that, then 3-7 sig, and then 9mm. Um, and, and, and I don't think anybody's debating that. So it's a different argument when we're talking about law enforcement use, military use versus civilian um, CCW use. Military being limited to using jacketed hollow points with the exception of during, uh, during anti-terrorism missions. When we're not talking about using full metal jackets, 9mm Luger now offers select projectiles which are under identical testing conditions outperforming most of the premium line 40 Smith & Wesson and 45 auto projectiles tested by the FBI. So this is what they're saying is that the projectiles offered now with the 9mm because of the 9mm the speed of the round that is, that is producing with the balance with the size of the round is producing and outperforming in the ballistics gelatin test than the 40 Smith & Wesson and the 45 auto. Projectiles are what ultimately wound our adversary and the projectile needs to be the basis for the discussion. So what they're saying is that the actual bullet, the thing that comes out of the freaking brass casing, that's what actually matters the most with this. And so, and, and that sounds kind of common sense to say, except for when we talk about guns like 357 Magnum, 357 Sig, the round is almost identical in size to the 9mm. You know, we can obviously have our varying grains there, uh, but we're getting the same diameter round with that. Uh, but the the powder charge behind it and the velocity is really what the what the significant change is. And so what the FBI is saying with this and what this study is showing is that the projectile itself is the majority of what's causing that damage. And that that powder charge behind it has the um, not not that it doesn't make a difference. It definitely does. But that it's a uh, it's a marginal difference as far as what that actually offers. Now again, uh, when we talk about this, we're talking about human targets. We're getting that 12 to 18 inches of penetration. But Ideally what we're looking for and the single most important factor in effectively wounding a human target is to have penetration to a scientifically valid depth. FBI uses 12 to 18 inches. Now the reason that we're using this 12 to 18 inches as a scientifically valid depth is because when we look at a human target, whether we're shooting from the front or from the side, that 12 to 18 inches will cover the majority and the average size human from uh, entry to exit. And so ideally what we want is we want this bullet to expend the maximum amount of ammo, uh, or I'm sorry, the maximum amount of energy within that human target and we're putting all of that energy into the into the target so all that foot pounds of force everything uh, expels inside that target and on where the bullet would essentially the exit wound would be him uh, the bullet just kind of dropping out the other uh, other side so creating a nice exit wound and then dropping off the other side so that's ideally what we're looking for but that's obviously we're not going to get to that point so what we're looking for is we're looking for the maximum wound cavity within that 12 to 18 inches. If that wound cavity expands and creates an awesome wound cavity at 25 inches, it doesn't really make much difference because that's after the bullet has already left the the, the, uh, the assailant's body. So it doesn't seem to matter that much uh, at, at that point in time. 
So next on the docket, we know that 70 to 80 percent of the rounds that are fired downrange by law enforcement are misses. And that's not a knock against law enforcement. That's not a knock against military or anybody uh, that's, that falls into that category. That's just a, uh, a reality of the situation. When, we're, we, when we are actively engaged by an, by an assailant and we're getting shot at by them as well as we're firing back, we're both moving. We're under the stress now of being shot at. And so that's going to force us to miss 70 to 80 percent of our shots. So the obvious advantage of the 9mm is that we get more rounds per the size of the weapon. Uh, but additionally, on top of the uh, on, on top of the added rounds, uh, nine millimeter has less recoil, so we get follow-on shots off a lot quicker. So we're able to get more rounds downrange faster. Um, and so if we're missing, if we get ten rounds downrange as opposed to five, with say a forty-five, uh, and we're still missing eighty percent of those shots, uh, we've now got two shots on target instead of just one. Okay, I want to thank you guys for taking the time to uh, to watch this and kind of check out some of the uh, the Battle Drill Six productions here that we got going for the uh, for the ballistic side of things. Uh, if you if you like this and you want to see more of it, please subscribe to the channel, like us on Facebook at Battle Drill Six, and uh, and also let me know if you guys want to uh, see some more in this series and see some more things going with uh, with terminal ballistics and kind of how that stuff works out. Again, thanks so much for uh, for subscribing and supporting us. I really appreciate it. Remember to stay alert, stay alive, and thanks for watching.